It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I've got the uh, live uh, Deerfield cam up here underwater. Just saw a little Cuda swimming around down there. He's kind of hanging around the camera, but look at that water clarity and the color. It's just absolutely beautiful. Visibility is a good day for diving out there if you're a diver in South Florida. Uh, fishing, I don't know. Usually clear days like this aren't that good for fishing. I just saw a uh, fishing weight and a piece of bait just dangling there <clears throat> on the other view here a little while ago. Looks like it, <laughs> all the fish were like staring at it. Don't go near that. So, <laughs> oh, I don't think they're fooling anyone out there. Well, let's say, speaking of fooling anyone out there, hey, let's take a look at this. Facts versus narrative. This is facts right here. The good stuff, you know, bananas, apples, and uh, this is narrative. <clears throat> well, apparently the good stuff for some people, but it's not very healthy for you. Narrative versus facts, folks, and that's what we got going on out there. You've got a narrative, uh, oh man, on financial matters, on everything to do with corporate news and government officials and and uh, uh, politicians, man, it's all narrative. And a narrative is very addictive. It can be very addictive. Uh, and uh, uh, I think Lennon actually probably said that if, if I only had big tech and uh, corporate news back then, he probably, well, we'd all be speaking uh, uh, Russian, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, well, possibly. Well, here's my other meme for the day. If you want to cure all that and you want to stop uh, being addicted to narrative, then uh, do what little Susie do. Cure, uh, do do what little Susie did is cure the worst viruses of all. Smash that TV set, and when I say smash a TV set, I'm just saying turn off that corporate news, turn off that official corporate narrative, turn off that uh, official corporate narrative of politicians and people that are really not looking out for your best interests, folks. Uh, and that's the truth. Well, let's move along from there. You know my feelings on this. Let's take a look at what markets are doing right now. Uh, maintaining, I'm really surprised. I was expecting some monkey hammering, but there's some weird stuff going on out there, especially with gold right now. And uh, as I said, silver will follow gold, but silver showing some good strength as well. I've been hanging on to this $25 plus mark. Uh, platinum uh, hanging on to the high thousand and uh, palladium just sailing. But as I said, palladium doesn't surprise me. As of last Friday, I thought it was a good move to buy palladium at around 2300 Even though I don't understand that mark market too much, uh, I saw the writing on the wall. You know, palladium, as soon as the sanctions get hit, palladium's going to sail through the roof as well. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Look at that, 76 bucks up today. <clears throat> And uh, why didn't I tell you about this a long time ago? Because it's not a metal I really follow, and we sell so little of it. Uh, so, uh, uh, and it seems to be highly volatile as well. Uh, let's take a look at current markets, a low of 1922, a high of 1938, and uh, currently sitting at that 1930 level. So some good strength in the gold there. Silver as well, holding on to that $25 mark, a low of 2513, a high of 2548. Currently sitting somewhat in between at the 2521 level. And uh, again, platinum 1,085. Uh, looks like it was getting near that uh, $1,100 mark, but 1,068 to 1,093. Uh, currently sitting at 1,085. Let's take a look at the 24 hour charts and see what's happening here as well. Do a quick refresh there and see what we got. And there's my refresh. Uh, yesterday, that was yesterday's line. Of course, gold did get uh, monkey hammered back somewhat, and then in the overnight markets uh, and during uh, New York markets here, but kind of steady and sideways, holding on to that 1900 plus mark pretty handily. Um, I think a couple days ago we did see it uh, drop below 1900. Uh, there you go, right there. Uh, when was that on? Uh, uh, let's see, well, today's Thursday. That would have been on Monday, I believe. So on Monday, uh, well, I see this uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday. I'm sorry, on Tuesday, uh, there. Well, there's your mark. Gosh, where is it right there? It was sub 1900 on gold. I'm sorry, all those lines converging right there got me a little nervous. But uh, take a look at this activity where a lot of activity uh, you can see it too just by looking at these uh, lines here. Take a look at the uh, activity and where a lot of the activity up and down has been happening. It uh, looks like in the early morning markets and the opening of the New York markets, and it kind of flattens out and moves upwards uh, somewhat. A lot of strange stuff going on out there, unexplainable by me uh, for sure. Uh, to some point, let's take a look at silver. Uh, same thing. Uh, uh, that was uh, Tuesday's market, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Thursday kind of drifting upward a little bit here in the overnight markets, and then, uh, of course, in New York. Uh, they're right there. See New York opens right there, and then you can see uh, silver getting monkey hammered downward, uh, but still hanging on to this $25 level right now. 
let's see what happens. I mean, uh, man, I don't even know what to think right now. This uh, Ukraine deal threw a, a, uh, a monkey wrench in the, uh, uh, in the works here a little bit as far as trying to determine what was happening and where. I think a lot of people were taken off guard by a big up in the gold market. You know, and this up in the gold market may very well have something to do with Russia, and the reason that gold has been so strong may have something to do with Russia as well. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. There's a report here by Tom Lungo, uh, who I like to read his stuff. And uh, it's Guns, Goats, and, uh, oh, Gold, Gold, Guns, and Goats, or something like that's the name of his, his blog. But uh, he made some very uh, good points in uh, his recent blog. Also, uh, he pointed out something that I was unfamiliar with and I think is a, uh, a big uh, uh, reason why gold and silver prices, particularly gold, as I've been saying, gold, you know, silver will follow gold. Gold has been doing as well as it has. Let's take at the futures markets here, not futures, let's look at the Dow Jones. It is open right now. Uh, it looks like NASDAQ's down, S&P is down, and the uh, Dow Jones is up uh, negligibly at 34.8. And uh, it was up quite a bit this morning, but I'm starting to see that backing off here again. I think yesterday when Powell came out and said that he was going to uh, uh, not increase rates uh, to a 50 uh, 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 basis points, but uh, to maybe a 25 uh, basis points or something like that, uh, I think that got the equities markets pretty excited. But it's strange that most of the activity in the equities markets, most of the green activity, was in the futures market last night. And uh, uh, today, it looks like, um, I don't know, not so much in the green. So we'll see what happens. Stock's not my thing, but at some point, I think it's wise for anyone once the uh, stock market, when it does, I'm not sure how it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be an overnight deal with the stock market crashing. I think it's going to be a death by a thousand cuts. Uh, and we're going to just see it slowly decline back to, uh, I think I saw a prediction yesterday of 15,000 Dow. But holy Christ, that's like half. And if that happens over a period of time, even if they manage to slowly let the air out of the balloon, I'm not even now quite sure that's as healthy as just letting the whole thing pop at once. You know what I mean? But I honestly believe that uh, the presidential plunge or the uh, uh, plunge protection team, which is a presidential working group between the Fed, Treasury, and uh, the president, obviously, in his administration, is out there trying to do everything they can to prevent the, the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ from crashing overnight. I think they're out there actually buying equities somehow or supporting that market uh, in the overnight markets and also during the day when they need to. I believe that they, uh, they don't want to see an overnight crash like they did in 2008. But I'm starting to question the wisdom of that as well. And why am I questioning the wisdom? Is that, uh, the wisdom? Because if you're slowly letting the air out of the balloon, you just, again, it's death by a thousand cuts. Death is death, no matter how you figure it, whether you die overnight or whether you die over a long period of time. If you think about the patient and the, and the people, oh boy, that's a tough subject to bring up right now, especially, but when you, when you talk about the patient and you talk about the people around you, sometimes a quick death is better, folks. It, it allows people to regroup. It allows people to uh, uh, not grieve as long and go through the pain as long. Uh, so maybe, uh, uh, maybe this idea of allowing these markets to slowly deflate, which I think the uh, uh, plunge protection team is doing, the government is doing with, with the help of the Fed and Treasury, um, I think they're, allow, you know, they're not letting it uh, crash overnight. But that may even be worse, man. This could even be worse for, for the medium and long term economy. Maybe for the short term it seems like the way to go. But I'm almost thinking a big crash, overnight crash in equity markets the best way to do it. This time, let these folks fail. Let these big companies fail. Let them go out of business. All right. Don't bail out these banks. Don't bail out the people that have made stupid decisions over and over and over only to be rescued by Fed money and government money. OK, let's quit doing that. Let's just let these folks fail overnight. And you say, well, what are we going to do if they fail? What happens when they fail? You know what happens when when big companies and, and places, you know, banks like that fail? Strong banks, people with the actual money go in and pick up the assets. All right. That's what happens. Uh, in, in what we've been doing by, by uh, uh, bailing these companies out, and again, too big, to, too, too big to fail, too big to jail, and definitely too big not to bail. That's kind of what they've been doing it for quite some time. And again, I think we're just hurting the market. You're throwing good money at bad, you know what I'm saying, uh, by constantly bailing out these banks and bailing out these operations. I don't believe there should be any more bailouts. Let the cards fall as they may, okay? My opinion, of course. Let's take a look at the why to what's going on. Purchasing power of the consumer dollar. This is a one-year chart, folks. Look at that. That is a slide down to hell, all right? 
Um, is there actually a, oh, there is a bottom here. That's 35.5. So we still got another 30, 35 to go before we hit zero here. So one year though, look at that chart, consumer price index for all urban consumers, purchasing power of the consumer dollar in the U.S. city. I love this chart because it really shows where we're going down, the buying power of the dollar down. Um, and again, what does this mean for gold and silver? Gold and silver is a great way to hedge against this. As this goes down, gold and silver will go up. Now, for those folks looking to get rich and for those folks wondering, oh, silver was $30 in uh, 2020. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing that, whiners out there, people looking to get rich quick. If you want to get rich quick, go to casino, go to a casino or go to the crypto markets, all right? Um, you know, and hopefully you will get rich if you listen to the people that know how to play those games and know how that game is rigged. Now, you might make some money, but meanwhile, gold and silver is not your place if you're here to get rich quick. Yeah, it could happen. You could make a lot of money real quickly, but you have to have your timing right. And as I said, for the get rich folks, uh, get rich quick folks out there, uh, just go to cryptos or a casino or something like that. <laughs> uh, I'm tired of hearing the whining, but silver was. Um, and let me get into why silver and gold haven't, 2020 was, uh, 2021 was, was such a suck year. It's hard to not be a suck year when a Bank of America uh, 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 buys 800 million ounces of silver and dumps it, physical, into the market in 2021. So for those folks who are wanting, silver hasn't done anything, you obviously have no clue of what's going on in the silver markets. So again, if you don't know how the game is played, you probably shouldn't be playing it. Uh, a little rough, but true. Let's take a look at what I do best, what I do better than the other, and I know I'm bragging and I've been doing this for a little while, but what do I do better than the uh, other YouTube talking heads out there? I am an experienced buyer and seller in gold and silver bars and coins, physical, not paper. I'm not an exp expert in charts. I'm learning about charts as you, uh, like you are as we talk about it. I'm learning about the paper markets like you are as well, but what do I know better than most everyone out there? I know the physical markets. I know bars and coins. I know what the best deals out there. And uh, it's the same as yesterday, so <laughs> that's the best I can tell you. Uh, nothing has changed here for quite some time. You know, the sovereign countries, Canada, uh, cuckoo borrows, you know, Australian stuff, uh, Austrian Philharmonic Silvers, uh, uh, Silver Krugerrands, uh, Britannias, American Eagles, all overpriced. And, and there's something strange here. There's, there's good production coming out of the generic, uh, uh, out of the generic, uh, 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 companies, you know what I mean? The the Silver Towns, the uh, uh, man, I forgot some of the makers of the uh, private mints. I'm sorry about that, but uh, there's plenty of uh, uh, generic product out there. But the sovereign products, you know, like Eagles and Maple Leafs and stuff, has been really slim to none. I believe they've reduced their production dramatically. And why would they reduce their production? I think I really honestly believe the U.S. Mint and other mints, um, you know, world mints are having issues supplying silver, getting silver. Or maybe they've been told to back off on, uh, on uh, minting coins, uh, because they certainly have, and I can't quite figure out why. Seems like the generic guys, you know, the private mints have no issue getting metal and putting out coins, but the uh, sovereign mints uh, are. And what is that causing? That's causing premiums just to go stupid on this stuff, folks. Sorry about that and graded U.S. gold coins. Let me see what I, else I was looking at. One ounce gold bars. All right, uh, for those of you that listened to yesterday's, last week's, and last month's report, bars are still the best deal. You can fast forward here if you like. <laughs> uh, at spot, spot plus 73 bucks, you can't get a better deal out there. I advertise to beat Atmex, JM, and SD. If you're new and listening to me and you live in South Florida, I'm your man. If you don't live in my area in South Florida, um, I suggest you find yourself a good local honest dealer uh, like myself and uh, they should be able to be Atmex, JM, and SD on their common products like bars and generics and some of the world, you know, sovereign stuff if they have it, all right? So uh, spot plus 73 bucks on gold bars. What's the best fractional pieces out there? Well, you can get some uh, uh, French 20 francs, they're 0.1867. You can also get uh, uh, sovereigns, which are 0.2354 ounces each. And then, uh, again, there's, there's a, a bunch of other foreign gold, old school products you can pick up for a decent premium. I think the premium on fractional, I don't think there's fractional Canadian, uh, uh, Canadians available right now, 10th ounce, quarter ounce, unless they pop up. I'm not even sure they're making them. Uh, the same would apply to uh, 
uh, Kruger ends, I don't think you can find 10th ounce, quarter ounce, and half ounces out there. Again, unless they've been bought and sold by someone. I don't think the South African mint or Canadian mints are producing much in the way of fractionals. The U.S. mint is, seems to be producing fractionals with 2022, but the premiums are still high. I mean, my cost is probably eight to, well, gosh, depending on what type of fractional it is, uh, from a half ounce to a uh, uh, tenth ounce, I bet you the range is my cost is probably eight to 11 percent. My cost, without even making a dime on it, is eight to 11 percent over the gold price. For Eagles, it's too much, folks. I wouldn't advise it. Again, I think there's some better deals out there. Uh, and start looking at the old school stuff, like I said, Sovereigns and, and French 20 francs and those things. You might find yourself some good bargains on those. I've got a few here. Uh, that I can do as well. But as far as Gold Eagles, Gold Maple Leafs, and uh, uh, even Krugerrands, the beloved Krugerrand, which has been around forever, you're better off buying bars, folks. There's no good reason to buy the, uh, the uh, Sovereign Mints right now uh, because the premiums are too high, in my opinion. You can make a much better deal with good, solid bars. Same thing with silver. Uh, best deal out there is silver bars, uh, ones, tens, hundreds. I uh, had a deal on kilos. I sold out like yesterday overnight. Wow. Uh, you know, years ago I couldn't get rid of kilo bars, <laughs> and nobody wanted them. They wanted ones, tens, and hundreds, and now I get kilo bars in, and I, I think I told you about them yesterday on this video, uh, and literally I sold them out, boom, like that. Uh, if I'm, I think I'm going to order some more. I'm not 100% sure, and actually, is that the kilo bars I have right there? Uh, no, I didn't get the R, RMC bars. I think I got, uh, who was it, Balcombi. I got, I got these in, Balcombi one, you know, kilogram bars, which are pretty nice. Uh, but again, sold out today, folks. But if you want to place an order, I will take orders for them uh, for the next batch that will be coming in. Uh, again, that's Spot Plus 275, which is a damn good deal, considering that uh, we were asking Spot Plus $3 and 100-ounce bars and Spot Plus uh, uh, 350 on, uh, or Spot Plus 3 on uh, uh, 10s and 350 on uh, 100s. Again, Silver Eagles, a Spot Plus 850, 950 is ridiculous. If you're buying them for anything other than, if you're buying them just to have one or give one as a gift, great. But if you're buying them for investment, it's a terrible deal, folks. Terrible deal. Stay away from Silver Eagles at these prices. Love the product, hate the premium, all right? Best deals, again, ones, tens, and hundreds. Uh, and Kilo Bars, I've got a special on all out right now. But if you want to get your hand in and, and uh, lock in some of these bars I got coming in, come on in. Uh, put your money down and you own them. We'll lock in with them as well. Uh, I s said I was going to talk about uh, uh, Mr. Luongo. I think, how do you pronounce his name? Uh, Tom, if you're out there, you ever watch my video or someone knows him, um, authored by Tom Luongo via Gold, Goats, and Guns blog. I like this guy. I read his stuff. I've seen a few of his videos. are hard to find, but uh, um, let me see. Where is the comment that he made that kind of blew me away a little bit here? The limits of money wars. And by the way, Close your eyes, I'm going to make you dizzy uh, if you're motion sickness, but uh, definitely go to ZH and read this article. Uh, uh, Luongo, opening salvos from what are Putin's next step in, in Ukraine. The very, very, very good article. Again, you can read it for free in ZH. Uh, but I'm going to point out something, and, uh, and I would agree with almost pretty much everything Tom says here. Uh, but not, I, this surprised me. I was not aware of this. Uh, ready? The limits of money wars. If Putin and Russia have achieved or about to achieve all of their military goals in Ukraine, what do they do to secure those gains? They have to neutralize the financial war waged against them and create an environment where Europe spends money it doesn't have, with failing political capital domestically and bankrupts them completely. Ooh, man, that's actually thinking uh, uh, chess moves ahead. And quite frankly, you know, love or hate Putin, and again, there's not really much to love about the guy, I'm pretty sure. He is a strong man. Uh, however, he, he is very tactical. He's very smart. I would say if we took all the world leaders in Europe and in, in America, you know, in, in our current administration, maybe even the past, combine them all together, Putin still has a higher IQ and a better ability to. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying that uh, I'm in love with the guy in any way, shape, or form. He's a strong man. I'm, I'm, I like peacemakers. I don't like war makers. But unfortunately, we don't live in a world of war makers anymore. But uh, ready? Ready for that drink? I digress. <laughs> they have to neutralize the financial war against them, okay? And the first move along those lines was just announced by the Russian Finance Ministry today, and I miss this. Uh, very important stuff here. The Ministry of Finance of Russia supports the initiative of deputies of the State of Duma to abolish VAT tax on precious metals for citizens. Folks, that's significant. That is really majorly significant, okay? Uh, basically, what Russia is going to do is they're going to go into, where they're going to uh, kind of push or let their people get into the gold markets, all right? 
It's a one way to secure their wealth. They can't be locked out of it, unlike Bitcoin, unlike the SWIFT system and all these other systems. And trust me, man, they can get locked out of Bitcoin. Anyone that doesn't think that, that cryptos, Russia can't get locked out of cryptos, is, is in full denial mode, all right? Uh, because we've already seen it happen with people. Well, look what Canada did uh, with the truckers, man. They basically cut the crypto down as well. Now, could you trade peer-to-peer? -peer? Sure. But how's that going to work for, for Russia? It's not. It's not. Peer-to-peer -peer will not work for them. And so what have they relied on? They've relied on something that's been around for 5,000 years. You can't counterfeit it. You can't confiscate it unless you physically go rob it from somebody. Uh, and uh, again, it's been around for 5,000 years as a form of money. And what is that gold? Today, when a gold bar is purchased, oops, sorry about that. Uh, today, when a gold bar is purchased in a bank, the value-added tax VAT of the goods is at the rate of 20%. The reverse transaction to sell and get to the bank does not involve the return of a VAT paid, which makes transaction in gold unprofitable for citizens. And by the way, for you folks that in Europe that have to pay VAT on gold and silver, that's sinful. Your, your government sucks as well. I mean, you probably know that already. That's probably why you're watching this. But charging VAT on gold and silver is absolutely ridiculous. Greedy mothers. And again, they don't want you buying gold in Europe. That's why they charge VAT. But as I said, second drink of the day, I digress. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering what I'm saying, uh, drink of the day, and I, uh, a couple folks out there, every time I say a particular word, which I say quite often, uh, they take a drink. So uh, uh, I guess this week's word is digress. Uh, there were three drinks today, or four. Against the background of an unstable geopolitical situation, investing in gold would be an ideal alternative to buying dollars. Doggone it, why do I keep doing Sorry about that, I keep screwing that up. Um, the U.S. currency is more volatile, subject to all kinds of risk, of course we know that. Because of this, it cannot be a worthy competitor to precious metals, says Russian Finance Minister Anton uh, Silwanov, whatever, okay? The rate of gold is subject to short-term fluctuations, but in the long-term investment shows their profitability. In this regard, the Russian Ministry of Finance has prepared a positive conclusion to the draft law developed by the deputies of the state of Duma suggesting the, ab the abolition of VAT tax, the, abol the abolition of VAT tax on gold for individuals, okay? Basically, what they're going to do is they're going to remove the VAT tax, that ridiculous VAT tax that Europe has to pay on gold and silver, uh, that, that insane VAT tax that makes gold and silver unprofitable uh, for a lot of Europeans, purposely, too, folks. They'd rather, for you European folks, that's why they put a VAT tax on gold and silver. They don't want you buying it. They want you in their shitty fiat system, all right? Russia would rather have their people in their shitty fiat system as well, except their shitty fiat system is going to hell in a handbasket because of what's going on in Ukraine. So they did the best thing they possibly could. And in fact, I think it's even better than their shitty fiat system. Start relying on gold, folks. It's been around for 5,000 years. It's far, far more reliable and trustworthy than central banks all over the world, far more reliable than uh, governments all over the world. Uh, so anyway, this is very interesting. Uh, he goes on to say, and I'm not going to read this whole thing, what does that mean? It simply means, means simply that Russia has now, in effect, begun the remonetization of gold for domestic purposes. By removing the VAT on gold purchases, Russian citizens can now offset their currency risk with gold and stabilize the domestic monetary situation. And folks, I do believe that there is a battle going on right now. This is why we've seen gold prices up significantly, most likely. Uh, also, I am told that Russia, um, Putin has pretty much said, and the finance minister has said that they are not going to be exporting gold anymore. For years and years and years, uh, Russia did not export their gold. They kept it for domestic use and for their central banks. Uh, it was, I think, a year or two ago, maybe not even a year ago, that they started selling back outside the country instead of keeping their gold domestically. Well, now they're back into doing that again. They're not selling any gold. They're going to keep all their gold uh, domestically. And what does that mean? Does that mean that the, uh, the BIS, the, the bankers out there, are going to try to monkey hammer the price of gold so, so Russian citizens and Russia can't benefit from that? I think that's a possibility, folks, and this might be why you're seeing this gold not, sh not just shooting right through the roof over 2000. I think that, well, obviously, if this has been uh, uh, told to us, and this is public knowledge now, that Russia is going to rely on their gold supply. I mean, it's out. The cat's out of the bag. They're going to rely on their gold supply. They're going to get rid of that, and that's the way they're going to prevent their citizens from losing money on the ruble, offset the ruble, you know, a hedge against the falling ruble, okay? However, 
Apparently, I would bet you that our governments know this, EU, United States, um, that uh, uh, the bankers worldwide know this, and there's probably an assault on gold right now, trying to prevent the gold price from going much higher. And that's probably why we haven't seen the gold price just swell well above 2,000, uh, 2,500, which it should be. However, don't forget that if they hurt gold, they also hurt themselves because a lot of central banks, except for the U.S., I don't know if there's any gold in uh, Fort Knox, but a lot of central banks do own gold. So it's kind of a catch-22 if they do knock the prices down because they're hurting themselves as well. Well, anyway, great article. I highly recommend you read this again. It's uh, by, uh, uh, authored by Tom Longo Gold. I'm, I'm going to click this one too. And uh, Gold goats and guns this guy writes some really cool stuff there's his earl right there if you want to go directly to that page you can freeze this and uh, uh, copy that down but gold goats and guns that's today's article right here what are putin's next steps highly recommend you read that you'll be smarter than the average bear if you do and you'll certainly be smarter than the corporate talking heads on television uh you know the the news people and you'll be smarter than the uh, politicians that tell them what to say well, let's take a look at yesterday's video, Monkey Hammer Time Yet. I'm just expecting, you know, as I said in yesterday's video, I, I, whenever there's news, they monkey hammer the markets before, after, during, whatever. And uh, someone mentioned that they should have a graph for every time that Powell speaks to show what gold and silver prices have done. And if you had a graph that showed that, you'd probably see that it is true. I, I recognize these patterns. I see these patterns. They use opportunist they use opportune newsworthy events to monkey hammer the price of gold and silver down. It's not the events themselves that are monkey hammering the price of metals down. It's them taking the opportunity to, to promote negative stuff about markets. And Well, anyways, uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, I didn't say the word, <laughs> monkey, monkey hammer time. Monkey hammer is actually the word that people were drinking on for quite some time, but uh, I'm not saying that as much lately. Uh, just because you all get it. Why should I repeat something that you all get now? Let me go down to the bottom here and uh, don't get uh, motion sickness on me. And let's take a look at yesterday's comments and where are they? Here we go. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for, uh, for I, I'm mentioning names here, but you all know who you are. You can see it right here. Thank you everybody for commenting. And uh, Strongman Silver and Gold, great I used to fish off Deerfield Beach Fishing Pier. And we have food at Flanagan's, oh yeah. Flanagan's too, man. Boy, they're consistent, the food's the same. Not great, not bad, but consistent and always there. Uh, Bill Sutherland says, uh, Powell is answering questions for politicians, so Golden Silver had to be pushed down. It would be interesting to see a monkey hammering chart correlate. There you go. Uh, I would be interested to see that. It would be interesting to see a monkey hammering chart correlated to Powell's public speeches. Powell speaks, Golden Silver drop, markets rise, and Powell looks like he's in control. That's true, Bill. Uh, Linton Gardner thanks me for the Balden bankrupt. One of the best, if you want to understand what Ukraine is like, what Russians are like, what that region is like, uh, in an entertaining, fun way, uh, watch Bald and Bankrupt if you hadn't watched my uh, video in the last couple of days. It's one of my favorite channels to learn about that region, but it's called Bald and Bankrupt on YouTube. Um, I think if you watch that, again, you'll be smarter than the talking heads on TV and smarter than the uh, people that run Europe and the United States, in my opinion, the moronic politicians. Uh, Hunter, <laughs> geez, I like to say it's funny, Bob, thanks, but. Uh, let's put them all into another cell wall and silver next week. Tough to see. We'll see what happens here. Um, but you know what? The more silver and gold want to move up, the more it starts kind of tugging to move up, the more obvious and blatant their, their manipulation is. And the more obvious it becomes and the less their credibility comics comes. All right? That hurts them more than anyone else. As long as you're not, you know, you're not invested in comics and you're not invested in these people, that uh, manipulate the markets now, and you'll be fine. You're holding gold and silver bars. So, I mean, what do you got to worry about? Nothing. In fact, these manipulators have done nothing but allow us the opportunity to, to keep stacking gold and silver at these ridiculously cheap prices while they manipulate these markets down. So, you know, hey, take advantage of it. Uh, that's true, Alex. Let's see what happens. Well, much more. 18 quarter days fires on the 31st. Key dates for Monkey Hammer. Lots of big players. That's true, Alex. Oh, you're a technical guy. Nice to see you posting. Thank you. Um, I have to wonder if banks have enough ammo left if uh, Russia takes Kiev, China backs Russia and invades Taiwan. Woo, boy. Man, now, that's just making my head explode here. Um, <laughs> I think uh, the Fed raises only 25, oil keeps saying Middle East keeps and doesn't raise it. Um, yeah, demand is going to get out of control. There's no doubt about that. We already know that. Hey, thanks for watching, Ramon. Good points there as well. 
Uh, JPM is predicting, uh, please let me know where you saw that. I haven't heard anything of JPM predicting $1,550 gold by the end of the year. Um, uh, nothing about that. In fact, you're the first person I've heard talk about that. So if you got a link to that, definitely share that down below, Clayton. I'd like to see that statement. Uh, thanks for commenting and thanks for watching. Uh, hey, Lou, there you go. And uh, uh, thank you for the video. I enjoy speaking about the business. Lately, I found myself being very critical of precious metal stacking community. Oh, thank you, sir. I like all the compliments you're making my head swell, guys. <laughs> Uh, nothing beats U.S. junk silver premiums rising faster and will continue. Cheap fractional numismatic kick if you search. Uh, you know, there's true to that poor man's investing, but it is very, you know, spot plus 575. Now, you know, if, you're, if your dealer is giving it to you for cheaper than spot plus 475, 575, maybe that's not a bad deal, but it's, it, it is overpriced, man. You can buy generic bars or, or silver price plus $3. 90% is basically, and again, I love 90, but 90% is basically costing you uh, the spot price plus uh, 475 or 575 over spot, a dollar 75 to two dollars and 75 or a dollar 75. Hang on one second. Uh, 275, 375, four, Gosh, two to three dollars over what you could buy generic silver for. So, so poor man is investing. It really isn't the best deal right now. One ounce bars are 10 ounce in generics. Uh, but you do have a good point there. A lot of dealers don't check their 90, and you can have some fun if you search through it. That's for sure. Thanks for commenting, poor man, and uh, best of luck to you. And have a good day, sir. Uh, Welco, ten dollars anges, yeah, premiums on anges in Mexico and stuff is crazy. Uh, Mexican fifty pesos are like melt plus two hundred dollars as well. I just think there's not production out there and there's demand for it is the reason you're seeing some of these stupid premiums. Uh, supply and demand, simple supply and demand. Uh, Glenn says uh, perfect storm, China going into Taiwan. Uh, uh, wow, that's a possibility, man. That's just too much for my head right now. Make my head explode, Glenn. But that's a possibility as well. Uh, thank you for commenting. Uh, Brian uh, Gaito says, I'd like to see you debate Lynette Zhang. Okay, I know who Lynette is. I think I've watched a couple seconds or many of her video, and I'm not trying to be rude, but God, when you do this every day, you don't go home and watch uh, precious metal videos all night <laughs> when you do it for a living every day. Uh, Lynette Zhang says, her whole marketing plan is predicting on buying, predicated on buying uh, pre-33 collectible coins to guard against confiscation. I didn't know that about Lynette Zhang. I'm really surprised. She seems like a very smart woman. Um, her primary is those who can afford expensive collectibles, write the laws and influence them in the pre-33. Uh, she answered, hmm, I'd have to, you know, I, I've seen Lynette Zhang, she talks about the economy, she talks about uh, different things. Uh, uh, so I'm really surprised to see that she would be pushing pre-1933 gold because it's not going to be confiscated. There's, that's, confiscation is a bullshit lie. Uh, uh, done by, I mean, any, someone mentioned earlier anything would be confiscated. This is true. but. FDR had a reason to confiscate. We were on the gold standard at the time. He could make a half-assed reason why he wanted people to turn in their gold. And remember, people did it uh, for patriotic reasons, more or less. People like war bonds. People bought war bonds, even though, <laughs> all right. Uh, back then, uh, FDR asked when to turn in their gold, and we were on the gold standard. Problem is today, as Peter Schiff clearly pointed out a long time ago, and others have pointed out, including myself, we're not on the gold standard anymore. Uh, it would be paramount to theft. For them to come and get your gold and another reason why they wouldn't come and get your gold and they don't care about your gold because most americans own very little of it they'd have to go out and they'd have to search for it they'd have to slam your doors down they'd have to maybe even shoot some people to get their gold nowadays why would they do that how much gold are they going to get how much gold is in the hands of american people quite a bit but they would literally have to go out there and steal it kick doors down to get it uh, and that's not going to happen and why wouldn't that happen again we're, it's pure theft They'd have to, we'd have, we're not on the gold standard. And let me give you the third reason why they're never going to confiscate gold, because they don't have to. They don't need to. It would be too complicated, too hard, too violent to do. All they need to do is take your pension account, take your bank account, take your savings account, take your home and add taxes to your home, add additional taxes to your saving account, tax your, with a stroke of a pen, they could steal far more money than they could ever get by going door to door getting gold. So selling people 1933 and, and graded certified gold at super stupid premiums, you know, again, $200, $300 over the price of gold for a lot of $20 gold pieces, all right, that they push, that stuff they push um, is ridiculous. Paying stupid premiums under the idea that it might get confiscated is ridiculous. Now, do I like rare U.S. gold coins? I do, as a collectible. But as stacking, no freaking way. 
And uh, honestly, I'm really surprised to hear that she does push those. I'd like to maybe listen to one of her shows and figure out why Lynette Zhang would even uh, consider pushing her customers into 33 uh, pre-gold or pre-33 gold. Now, as I said many times, the reason I think, not the reason I think, the reason I know I can't speak for Lynette. Again, I've got to watch her video and see if she does indeed uh, push the pre-33 gold. But the only reason anybody pushes pre-33 gold is because the profit margins are much higher for the dealers, the people selling it. It is not to your advantage, folks. Uh, again, not saying anything against Lynette. Saw a couple of videos. Seems very bright when it comes to economies and stuff like that. But wow, I'd be surprised if she pushes pre-33 gold. But I'll look into that. And uh, I'd be happy to debate her on a civil level if she ever wanted to have a debate on that, if this is indeed true. Hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate that guy, too. Uh, cool name. <laughs> uh, does anybody feel that Biden wants to people talk to him sending troops as a human shield? That's a possibility. Uh, Liquid Electrum, and uh, thank you for watching. If silver was back buying SOV shares in large enough quantities, they walk out with sales. I heard they're buying 60 plus million ounces. So what the, would that do to the silver price? Obviously, all physical silver that's taking off the market will cause, ultimately, the price of silver to go higher and create more issues for paper holders, okay? Uh, but no less uh, 60 million ounces when you consider that Bank of America laid off 800 million ounces last year, year is why that market was so flat. Uh, 60, that's a lot of ounces, though. Hey, every ounce counts is taken off the market. Thanks for watching uh, uh, Chuck's Tough. And let's see here, um, one of my favorite channels. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. I would love silver if it would pull back to 16 and gold 1600. I can't say I feel the same, but you get what I'm saying is that all this manipulation has done, really, if you think about it, it has allowed a lot of people to buy physical at stupid cheap prices. All right. So think of it, you know, you know, turn uh, 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 lemons into lemonade by looking at it from that view. All these manipulators and monkey hammers have done is allowed us to buy silver cheap for a long time and keep accumulating. And I think that's been great for us. I'm an accumulator. Uh, Scott says, uh, thanks for watching, Silverback. Uh, nickel is catching up with silver twelve. And no, it's got to be an ounce, not per pound. Silver, silver is uh, not twelve dollars a pound yet, sir. <laughs> Uh, Michael, we're about due. Thank you, Barry. Beta White, yeah, I couldn't argue with that. And uh, I think small and the best one tenths half ounce in a F situation. Uh, Donald, you won't ever be using your gold for barter, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, even in the hyperinflationary Germany, uh, people that own gold and silver did as a hedge, and they just would take their gold and silver, go to their local gold and silver dealer, and trade it in for a wheelbarrow for all marks, which they would then spend. It's a hedge. I don't think you're going to be trading with it. And in a world where you would have to be bartering gold coins and chickens and stuff like that, man, uh, it's a mad, that'd be a Mad Max world. And chances are anyone knows you own gold, they're going to come and kill you for it. Uh, best thing to do in that situation and get yourself out in the middle of nowhere, raise some food, uh, and hide your gold. And every once in a while, go see the gold dealer to turn it into cash. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Thanks for watching, Don. Um, oh, I was late yesterday, Linda. Sorry about that. Got the video out a little bit late. Just been crazy busy, short help, you know, you name it, all kinds of things. And then sometimes in the morning, I just draw a blank on what to talk about. So none of these shows are scripted, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I just heard both had a short on gold. That's true. They have 30 million, 30 million ounces, supposedly. Not supposedly, but Ted Butler says that. They, they, they purchased 800 million ounces of, of gold, silver from... Uh, JP Morgan laid it off, and that's why silver prices sucked in 2021, physical. And then they bought 30 million ounces of gold, which they laid off as well. Uh, and again, that was probably an arbitrage trade. Bank of America probably said, oh, where can we raise, you know, uh, you know, billions and millions of dollars, millions and, why have billions when you have millions? Well, <laughs> millions of dollars. Um, oh, I know, we, JP is offering us gold and silver, which we can sell immediately right into the market because it's in good demand. Take that money and put it into something else. I don't know what the something else was, but that's exactly what both did, and they're going to pay dearly for that unless they've been able to fill that positions, those positions. Uh, and JP is going to hold their feet to the fire for it for sure. Uh, you're welcome, Rabbit Klein. I appreciate that. Good local coin store. Takes care of you on 90%. Again, if you're buying your 90% for spot plus uh, three, less than spot plus four bucks an ounce or less, then that's okay deal. But, you know, I think the buy price is even higher than that for wholesale right now, Rabbit Klein. But it sounds like you're getting a good deal, and thanks for watching. Uh, oh, Living Cowboy, he's the guy who's doing drinking. He's doing the drinking game on my word. Trigger words are now monkey hammer. Don't make me go to silver. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching. Uh, what is the disposition of both a silver short position? 
Uh, you know, I'm going to bring that up. I think, well, actually, you know what? Do I have Ted Butler open here? And I'm going to go to the bottom of his page. Hang on one second. This is proprietary stuff that i got to pay for. So let's see what he says about BOFA here. It's a, I don't think he'd mind me sharing this. Uh, okay. Today's Thursday price, uh, total loss. I believe a sign of what, uh, as, far as, as far as Bank of America, if they're short 30 million ounces of gold and 800 million ounces of silver, I, which Ted Butler believes to be the case, it lose, its losses hover around $7 billion. So that gold and silver position that you were just asking about, sir, uh, right here, what is the difference between both of silver short position? They're in a $7, 8000000000 billion loss right now, according to Ted Butler. And uh, probably even more so now because metals are up from when he, when he did that article. Um, this could cause them big trouble, man. We'll see. And uh, I didn't see that. Jerome Powell uh, suggests two reserve currencies. Talk about blowing your leg. Uh, Mark, put that down in comments where he talks about the two reserve currencies. I did miss that. Locked and loaded, me too. I keep it cocked and locked all the time on my side. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. That's really about it. I think we're going to close this one out here. Um, oh, there's a facts and narrative again. Uh, folks, as, as fun as this stuff, as fun as the narrative may be, and it'll kill you, trust me. Seen it happen in the past. Narratives will kill you, obviously. Facts are much more healthier for you. And I know it's tempting to go to the narrative, but facts, look for the facts, folks. Stay away from corporate television. Stay away from official uh, narratives. That's whether it's government officials, government politicians, corporate news. Stay away from the narrative because that's exactly what it is. It's a drug. Get you hooked on it. Stick with the facts. They may not always be as exciting. But, hey, just like uh, Joe Friday would say, just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> Hey, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays at 954-493-8811. I've been in the same location since 1995 and been doing this since 77. As you know, I advertise to be at MexJM and SD Bullion uh, on uh, common gold and silver products. Easy for me to do and I'm very competitive. Nothing wrong with those companies, but I'm competitive. I'm small. I want that money. And uh, I'm going to give you a better deal on top of it and better advice than they can. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and uh, let's see what happens tomorrow, Friday. Bye now.